All right, today we're going to be talking about working with fractions, and we're going to be talking about specifically tape measure sizes. We want to make sure that when you're dealing with fractions and things like that, that it's actually relevant and applicable to what you're doing. So that's the fractions we're going to be talking about uh, in this activity. All right, so the first problem we're going to talk about is 1 8 plus 3 16 and how do we add those two together? Well, the first thing we need to do is look at the denominators and we're going to always with the fractions of the tape measure we're going to always be going to the biggest denominator okay so we're going to try to get this number over here the eighth to be into the 16th format so we're gonna to have to expand this fraction out so that it, it equals 16 and how do we do that well we're going to ask ourselves what's eight times two is going to give us 16 so eight times two is 16 so we're going to rewrite that and then what we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So one times two is going to be uh, two sixteenths, all right? One times two is two, so two sixteenths. Now we just carry over the rest, three sixteenths, and now we can just add straight across the top. Three plus two is five, and we keep the denominator since they're in the same uh, unit there or in the same denominator to begin with. So 5 16 so we have to ask ourselves, can this be reduced and we look at the number now typically if the top number is an odd number, then we can't reduce it. That's not always the case, but in this particular instance when we have 16 on the bottom, that is the case 5 cannot uh, go into 16 equally and get a whole number so 5 16 is our final fraction. So let's take a look at another one. This is one quarter plus three eighths. So again, the first thing we're gonna do is look at the denominators. The denominators, we're gonna have to get to the bigger number, which is eight. We gotta make four, we have to expand this out to get to eight. So four times what is eight? Four times two, right? So four times two is gonna be eight. And what we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So one times two is going to be two. So two eighths plus three eighths, and our answer should be five eighths. All right, again, we have an odd number on the top, five. Five can't be divided by two and get a whole number. So we are done reducing this fraction. All right, three quarters minus one eighth. Again, we're looking, now we've changed the units, right? We're subtracting now, but we're going to still look at the denominators and we're gonna go to the larger denominator. So we need to get the four to equal eight. We gotta expand this fraction. So four times what? Four times two, and that's gonna give us eight. And then what we do to the bottom, we need to do to the top. So three times two is going to be six so six eighths we carry down the rest of the the equation there and we got six minus one right across the top six minus one is five and we keep the denominator because they're in the same um, units there they're in eights so five eighths would be our answer again five divided by two is not going to get us a whole number so let's keep moving on and try another one so 15 16 minus 1 fourth. Again, we're looking at the denominators. Very first thing, we got to find a common denominator, which if in this case, remember, it's going to be the biggest one. So 16 we got to get 4 to equal 16. So we're going to ask ourselves, what times 4 equals 16? And that answer is, of course, 4. 4 times 4 gives you 16. And what you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. So 4 times 1 is going to be 4 sixteenths, okay? Then we're gonna copy down the rest of the equation. So 15 minus four is going to be 11. And we keep the denominator because we're working in the same unit. We've got those in the same units, so 16. So 11 sixteenths. Again, we're left with an odd number on top. So that is our final number, 11 sixteenths is going to be our final number for this answer. Okay, remember, find the common denominator, then go ahead and expand the fraction that needs to be expanded, and then just do the math across the top. 
So three different numbers that we're looking at. We're looking at their denominators, and we're going to go with the biggest one. So 16 is what we're going to get all of these two. So we have to multiply these two. So 8 times what is 16? 8 times 2. So 8 times 2 is 16. Then we're going to do the same thing to the top. 7 times 2 is 14. All right, the next problem, uh, 2 times 8 will get us 16. And what we do to the bottom, we do to the top. So 1 times 8 is going to be 8. Okay, and then the last part we just copy down, and we're going to pull over our uh, symbols there. So now we're going to just do the math straight across the top since all of our denominators are in the same units. So 14 minus 8 plus 1. So 14 minus 8 is going to be what? 6. And then plus 1 is 7. And we just follow over with the, num the denominator. So 7 sixteenths. Again, 7 is an odd number. We can't divide uh, 7 divided by 2 and get a whole number. So we're done with that. All right, let's take a look at this problem. We have three different fractions and we have two different units that we're working with here. We're subtracting and adding. Uh, so we've got a couple things that we're doing, some functions that we're doing. So first thing we're gonna do is look at the denominators and we're gonna choose the denominator that is the biggest. So 16's the biggest if we look up there. So we're gonna have to get those other two expanded out to be 16. So let's do the eight first, let's go eight times two, that's gonna get us 16. And what we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. So five times two is gonna give us 10. So now we're gonna do the same thing to three fourths. We're gonna expand that up. We're gonna take four times four is gonna get us 16. So four times four is 16. And what we do to the bottom, we do to the top. So three times four is going to be 12. And we're gonna just copy down everything else three sixteenths, and then our signs or symbols. And now we just do the math straight across. So 10 plus 12 is gonna be what, 22, minus three is gonna be 19. And we keep the denominator, since the denominator is the same across all fractions, we don't have to do anything with that, we just transfer that over. So 19 sixteenths is our answer. But we're not done, we need to simplify this problem or reduce it down. And how are we gonna do that? So the thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take 16 and we're gonna subtract that from 19. So if we have 19 and we subtract 16, we're gonna have three left over. Three, and we're gonna transfer the denominator 16. So now we're not done, we have to write this correctly. So because we subtracted 16 from 19 one time, we're gonna move the whole number of one, right? One time we subtracted and we had three left over. So one and three sixteenths would be our answer. And we get that one whole number again because we subtracted 16, the, which is the denominator from the numerator and we had three left over. Let's take a look at another one. Next one, we're gonna go to multiplication. So three eighths times two. Now, when we're dealing with multiplication, the thing to remember is that whole number like this is still a fraction, and we can write that as 2 over 1 to get our fraction. Then we simply multiply straight across. So 3 times 2 is 6, and 8 times 1 is 8. So 6 eighths would be our answer. Now, we need to reduce that. The top is a even number, so we know that it's going to be able to be reduced. So we're going to take 6. We're going to divide that by two and that gets us three and we're going to do the same thing to the bottom so eight divided by two and that's going to get us four so three quarters now we're at an odd number here on top and we're not going to be able to reduce that down anymore so three fourths is its reduced form all right let's look at another one three sixteenths times three all right so remember three is the same thing as a fraction of three over one and we're gonna multiply straight across. So three times three is nine, and 16 times one is 16. Now nine is an odd number, and so we can't reduce that down anymore. Okay, when we're working in sixteenths, eighths, quarters, if the top number is an odd, it's not reducible. There are some exceptions to that, 
but very few. All right, let's take a look at this one. Seven eighths times three. You need to remember that three is a fraction. It is three over one. And now we're gonna multiply straight across. Seven times three is 21. And eight times one is eight. So 21 eighths. Now, the top number is bigger than the denominator. So we're gonna to have to do some things here to reduce this or simplify this down. So we're gonna subtract eight from 21. So we're gonna take 21 minus eight, and that's gonna give us 13 left over, okay? 13 eighths. Now we subtracted that one time, right? 21 minus eight one time. So I put the one down here and we were left with 13 eighths left over. Okay, now we're gonna subtract eight from 13 because 13 is still larger than the denominator. So we're gonna take 13 minus eight. And now that we've done this twice, we're gonna write down two because we've done eight two times. And what we're left over with is five. So 13 minus eight is five and we transfer over the eights again. Okay, now it's no longer bigger. The numerator is no longer bigger than the denominator. So we are at its lowest form and five is an odd number and we're working in eight. So we're no longer reducible. We can't take eight divided by five and get a whole number. So we're gonna be at its lowest form right there, five eighths. So we'll just move that down and we should be at two and five eighths for the answer. All right, let's take a look at this problem. Seven eighths divided by two. We need to remember that two is a fraction, it's two over one. And what we're gonna do now is we don't like to divide, so we're going to change the symbol. So seven eighths, and we want to multiply now. So we're gonna change the function to multiplication. And when we do that, we're gonna take the inverse of the number. So we're gonna have one half instead of two over one, it's one over two, because we flip that when we change the sign. All right, now we multiply straight across. Seven times one is seven. Eight times two is 16. That's all you have to do for dividing fractions. Let's take a look at another one. 5 16 divided by 2. Remember, 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1. And what we're going to do now is rewrite this, and we're going to change the function or the sign. And so we're going to have 5 16 times, and we're going to flip the number now because we changed the sign. We're going to flip it to 1 over 2. And we're going to do our math across there. 5 times 1 is 5, and 16 times 2 is 32. Now, because we haven't worked with 32s very often, the one thing that we're going to want to do is take 5 and see how many times it'll go into 32. So if we take 32 divided by 5, if we can come up with a whole number, then this number is reducible. If it's not, if it's a whole number with some fractions or decimals after it, when you put it in a calculator, then this number is not reducible. We need to pull up in a calculator because I don't know what 32 divided by 5 is. All right, so we've got our calculator pulled open. We're going to put 32 in, and we're going to divide by 5. And the answer that we come up with is 6.4. Now, it's not just a nice whole number. It's a whole number plus a portion of a number after it. So this number of 5 30 seconds is not going to be reducible because we're not getting a whole number. So 32 divided by 5. And we did not get a nice whole number, so this is not reducible. So the answer is 5 30 seconds. Now, where is a 30 second fall on a tape measure? So if we pull open a tape measure here and look, we uh, a 30 second is 2 16th. So if we look up here at the ruler, this would be 1 30 second, 2 30 second. So if we count over, we should have 5 30 seconds right there. It's a little bit bigger than an eighth of an inch is where 5 30 seconds lies. All right, 32s or 30 seconds, um, would be a half of a 16th. We don't see them or use them a lot. Just know that it's a half a 16th, and it might be a number that you come up with when you're uh, figuring and laying out different, different problems. So let's take a look at another one. 5 16ths divided by 5. Okay, this is a different number. This isn't just 2 or something like that. we got a bigger number we're going to be working with. So 5 is the same thing as 5 over 1, 
and we're going to rewrite this five sixteenths. We're going to change the sign to multiplication, and then we're going to take the inverse as one over five. So let's multiply straight across now. Five times one is five, and 16 times five is 80. Okay. Now, this bottom number isn't a number that I'm usually uh, familiar with, okay, because we're working in really small amounts now. We're like very fractions of a fraction of a, of a 16th. So one thing that we're going to do, it's an odd number on top, and it's a small odd number, but I'm just going to check. Can I take 80 and divide it by 5 and get a number? And so if I can reduce that, we're going to check and see. So I'm going to take 80 divided by 5. Since I don't know what 80 divided by 5 is off the top of my head, we're going to put this in the calculator, 80 divided by 5, and see if we end up with a whole number. And we do. Okay, we end up with a 16. So we know that we're going to be able to reduce this fraction because we're left with a single whole number that we're going to plug in. So let's go back to our problem. So this fraction itself is going to be reducible even though the top is an odd. So this is one of those anomalies that you might see. So 80 divided by five gets us a whole number of 16. And then five divided by five is simply one. So this is 1 16th of an inch. All right, so hopefully that was helpful in describing and working with fractions, specifically that relate to the tape measure. I know in some of the math classes, they have you doing problems that really aren't relevant to different things that you're gonna be working on. But here in the wood shop, we want to make sure that you're working with fractions that you'll actually be using and possibly uh, use during the class. If you have any questions, as always, please talk to your instructor and make sure you get the help that you need.